Welcome back to Class Farms, guys. Kai over here with Jason. What's going on, folks? And today we're going to talk about how to tune your AR-15 or AR platform gun rifle so it shoots not only reliably, but also a lot better than it does yeah. originally. Suppressed, unsuppressed, this video's for you. So. Exactly. When you yeah. shoot suppressed, you know, you get a lot of gas back to the face. Also, the bolt comes back a lot faster due mm -hmm. to a lot of back pressure. So we're going to address all of these issues mm -hmm. so you can actually better tune your rifle and it shoots better for you. And speaking of suppressed, dude, nowadays is the time to buy a suppressor yep. compared to less than a year ago. Like, wait times are a lot shorter, which is like, I think the low shortest one I heard like three or four days yeah some people are getting them even back in hours 18 hours to be exact on NFA tracker so 18 hours yeah. that's crazy so if you're into that stuff you're gonna add a can to your rifle you're gonna want to tune that thing so it shoots reliable and as smooth as possible yeah. so with that being said this video is gonna be perfect for you yeah. so let's dive right into it and talk about what buffers yeah start uh, off with buffers exactly so we've got all right, so we're gonna go into it. So bear with us, guys. You can pause this video if you wanted to, take some notes, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's so many things that you can do to your rifle to perfectly tune it. Most likely, if you have a factory gun, it's gonna run reliably, not necessarily it's gonna have the best recoil impulse. And if you add a can, then it's gonna change things around. Mm -hmm. So from the factory, they should run just fine. Right. But uh, with that being said, the first thing I would address generally if I'm going to try to play around with my gun, mm -hmm. uh, AR-15, it's the buffer spring and the buffer thing all together because that's the easiest one to get right. to. Uh, and I know we want to talk about some of the operational gas system, but we're going to get to that yeah. in a minute because the buffer thing is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think about that? What do you know about the buffer systems? So buffer systems kind of coincide with, first of all, what length uh, barrel that you have, what kind of gas system that you have as well, whether it be full length rifle, mid length, small little pistol one over here, uh, carbine, carbine length, length yeah. over there. So everything kind of plays, what it, well, math is math at the end of the day, right? So Exactly. Um, you know, what comes standard on your regular 14.5, 16 inch is gonna be a standard H buffer. H1 and or carbine, so. Yeah, like carbine buffers, like what we have all these buffers right here, mm -hmm. and these are just basically weights. Yeah. So their weights are gonna differ, but their size is about the same. So we've got the carbine, which is about three ounces, mm -hmm. and then the H1, mm -hmm. like about 3.8, and then we got the H2, which is about 4.6 to 4.7, these are ounces. And then we have the H3 right here, which is about uh, five point uh, oh to five point four, give or four, take. right yep. around there. Yep. And then we have the H four, which is like we call it, it's a heavy or pistol uh, buffer, mm -hmm. which is about five point oh to eight and a half. Yeah. In this case, it's like seven point two ounces. Yeah. This is from a uh, PCC. It's great for PCC actually. Mm -hmm. And then we have this A five now. This one is about H2 weight, about 4.6 to 4.7. Right, but that one's special because it's kind of like a hybrid. This so. is, yeah, this is, dude, it's, again, it's gonna get a little confusing. Yeah. It could just pause the video, rewind it, rewatch it, mm -hmm. you, you'll understand it better. So A5 is something intermediate. Just imagine this, a rifle system and a carbine system got married mm -hmm. or had a little hookup and a little baby came out, mm -hmm. stuck the little hybrid. Right. And then we have this, obviously, rifle which is same weight as, uh, this is about a, like H3, right? Mm -hmm. Five ounces, that's it. Just mm -hmm. in that neighborhood, five to 5.4, 5.3 yep. in that neighborhood. And uh, these are the weights. Again, uh, they could be like all the same length, but their weights are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about weights, obviously we have these springs that they go in just like this. So when the bolt comes back, it kind of presses it back. Mm -hmm. So depends on how much blowback you're getting. Yep. It, it kind of, uh, that depends your weight, which weight you're going to select. Generally an H2, which is right here, 4.6 to 4.7 is known to be that do all weight. Yeah. It, generally it, speaking. Generally speaking. It works well for me. I use an H2 and in, in everything yeah. that I use, um, especially with a braided spring, but as we get closer, we'll talk about a braided spring and its benefits as well. Exactly. So. If, if you're, if you added a can for your gun, let's mm -hmm. just say, let's say you have this, I don't know, like 16 inch rifle, whatever mm -hmm. you just throw a can on it. You're like, you know what? Let me, uh, let me work on the buffer system first. Mm -hmm. If you, if you're not going to adjust your gas, which we're going to get to in a second, what you would do is you just go ahead and remove it. And, uh, you got the H2, let's just say, you would probably throw an H3 on it. Can't. Just, yep. just to 
increase the weight a little bit because when you add a can to a gun, guys, you'll have a lot of back pressure, like pressure here build up, so a lot of back pressure comes back. And this bolt, by the way, all of these guns are checked for safe. Mm -hmm. We always do it every time before we shoot a video, FYI. Right now, this is clear again. So you'll have this bolt, the gas is coming back here, we'll just violently push this bolt back. Mm -hmm. When it does that, and the weight of this spring in the buffer mm -hmm. has a lot to do with that, right? So gases are coming back, so you added a ca can, now more gases are coming this way, so you're gonna have this violent hit the, hit the wall and come back. Uh, feeling you're gonna feel that on your shoulder so if you add a little bit heavier buffer in there then this violent motion like right. that is just going to be reduced depending on the weight like you go h3 or h4 depending right. on your setup then you'll have that less felt recoil right it's all about just controlling that yeah. reciprocating mass coming back if you think about it whatever you do to one you probably should do to the other so what, what you do to the front you should probably uh, do to the rear as well so exactly yeah. so that's so that's in a nutshell that's mm -hmm. the buffer weight all right now you got obviously springs yeah this is just your regular a, a carbine length uh, spring and then we've got the uh rifle length uh, springs over here. Yep. You wanna talk about the rifle length spring and carbine length spring? Yeah, so obviously you can see these are two different ones. Look at the height difference on these yeah. or length difference on these mm -hmm. as well. But this one's special as well as the Springco spring. So Springco actually gets into the powers that are going on even in the length of the spring, whether it be the white spring, the red spring, the orange spring, the green spring, and they actually give you different feeling of recoil along with different reciprocating masses going forward as well. Yep. yep. Going on to this one, another rifle length spring, but mm -hmm. this one is a braided spring. So here's another fun fact about springs and how you change them. Provided that you change it to something that's a little bit more dense in, in how it's made, it actually takes away that twang too that you mm -hmm. get. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure you've heard it in a regular rifle. You hear that little twang as yeah. the reciprocating mass is going back and forth. But this one is triple braided, so it kind of takes that away. Also, it's a little bit stiffer in its whole rigid construction, which helps slow down the cyclic rate, even though we're not talking about full auto, but there is still kind of, kind of a cyclic rate, but you get what I'm saying. You still get to feel that mass um, travel a little bit slower and it perfectly times things to go along with what's going on. So. Exactly, and there are also coated ones yeah. too. Like we don't have one right here, but there's those coated uh, springs out there. So it kind of removes that little twang mm -hmm. as well. But dude, that twang is so freaking annoying. It is. You're shooting the gun right here and all you hear is like, this is, this is, this is like this little sound in your ear. Yep. Uh, it's, it's not fun, but when you think about it, if you, like spring coat right here, you mm -hmm. said, you know, they're obviously color coded too. Like they've got the yellow, orange, and white. In mm -hmm. this case, we got the green. Mm -hmm. And this basically changes the uh, stiffness. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So the metallurgy, basically. Oh. So this really comes down to like, we can't just tell you, hey, put this one and this one together and put on your rifle and you'll be good to go. We right. cannot mm -hmm. say that to you. You have to play around with yep. it. But uh, depending on what you want to do, but when it comes to tuning your AR-15, so it shoots not only reliably, because reliability is very important, but also that perfectly tuned, so it feels really good in your shoulder, super flat and good to go. That's in a nutshell, no. the whole buffers and buffer uh, springs. And we have these different buffer tube lengths, yeah. right? And buffer tubes are right here, folks. This is the buffer tube, right? On an AR-15 or any AR platforms. Mm -hmm. This is where the uh, buffer and the buffer springs inside, the bolt comes back, obviously, kind of, Yep. And it compresses it and yep. goes back. Now, there are different sizes for these ones too. Different lengths, for Dif sure. Different, exact different yep. lengths. We have, obviously, this is a carbine length mm -hmm. spring that we were talking about, yep. and carbine length, a uh, buffer tube here, mm -hmm. but then you got that M16 over there with like, that's an actual full-blown Full length rifle spring. Exactly. So yeah, it's getting every bit you know of what I'm saying? goodness. Exactly. So we were talking about the A5 system. That's why I'm talking about these two different carbine versus rifle mm -hmm. uh, length because we have this little hybrid here. Uh, this is, again, this is an H2, 4.6 to 4.7 ounces weight, but if you look at it, it is actually longer than the traditional H2, yeah. right? Doesn't matter, they're the same exact weight. That's all that matters. But A5 uses a rifle length spring mm -hmm. so it's a hybrid h2 buffer with a rifle length spring that actually makes the gun shoot super soft super soft and in this case that's what ryan did he's actually using a buffer tube that is slightly 
longer than a carbine, mm -hmm. but shorter than a rifle length. Right. So it's one of those, again, it's like a hybrid, intermediate, let's just say, right? That's the uh, buffer tube, and he's using, obviously, a A5 buffer mm -hmm. in here, and with a rifle length spring, even though this is not a rifle length uh, buffer tube. I know it may get a little bit confusing on this one because it's a little hybrid. Someone out there just played around with it, cut things around, whatever, and came up with this A5 system. And they're like, holy crap, this works great. Mm -hmm. And the industry is actually slowly shifting to H5, the uh, A5, because it is actually a pleasure to shoot. Yeah. And I understand there's some other stuff that you do in your gas mm -hmm. uh, porting and gas adjustments, but in itself, it is a great improvement over carbine length system. Yeah, it blends in very well with this yeah. 13 9 pin and weld. Yeah. It's just a very soft shooter, so that's for sure. That's it. So, with that being said, that's in a nutshell buffer, buffer springs, carbine versus uh, rifle, and also a little intermediate A5. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on to the gas systems. Okay. Let's talk about how actually an AR 15 operation cycle works in the gas lengths and all that. Yeah, so you've got obviously rifle, which is a full length conversion of it. So that gas is bleeding off here, travels back, goes all the way back to the breech, sends that bulk carrier group and uh, recoil system all the way back, sends it forward, and that's it. And it's actually, I mean, rifle set length works. It does what it's supposed oh, it, to do. It, Plenty of dwell time, mm -hmm. you know, for a full powder burn, so. Yeah. Speaking of dwell time, yeah. I gotta talk about this. Got a little Visual aid, right? Well, visually, <laughs> we have this Anderson Dissipator. Yep. Again, these guns are all checked for clear, guys, prior to this video. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the difference? If you put that thing side by side, dude, I mean, I'm what is sure the difference here, there's guys? A huge difference. <laughs> this is both rifle length systems. Yep. But look at the barrel. There's literally no, I mean, this is a flash hider. It starts right here. Yep. There's, that's it. That's what, I mean, two inches of, uh, space or length for a dwell time pause. which uh, pause okay <laughs> which uh, if you really think about it guys the round ejects through the barrel and that dwell time is so that length is so important the muzzle to gas block is so important so it gets enough a uh, gases mm -hmm. back up to the gas port or the gas tube so the gun cycles reliably mm -hmm. when i first saw this gun i was like wait a freaking minute this gun should not cycle if it has the actual standard gas port mm -hmm. size wise. Mm -hmm. But now we talked to Anderson and those engineers told us they actually opened up the gas port a lot bigger so more gas are able to go with this little short space right. and the gun reliably cycles. And we obviously did videos on this. You guys can check it out mm -hmm. on our channel. Runs like a champ, yeah. no problems. But this is a great example to show how it kind of, it, without the handguard, right? Yeah. You fire the round, the round goes, through right here, comes out. As it comes out, there's a lot of pressure built up behind it. That's what propels, obviously, the round through the uh, barrel. Mm -hmm. As it also exits, all these gases, the pressure goes up to the gas port, but also, you know, there's some vacuum effect too. Correct. Back up to the gas uh, port, and gases go back up here mm -hmm. into the gas, into the, uh, sorry, the bolt carrier group, mm -hmm. and pushes it back. Mm -hmm. And, then you cycle the gun. Correct. That's why, like, if you actually add a can, which we're gonna get to, an espresser, now you have much more gases coming back, and this guy wants to come back even, even harder. More, yep, even harder more back. violently. Correct. Exactly. So, all right, so this is a rifle length. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I believe, a, uh, it, not mid intermediate, length. mid length, right? We got right a mid length there. here. Mm -hmm. So obviously the mid length is just a little bit shorter, but it still does the same job as rifle, pistol, and um, carbine length. So. Exactly. I believe yeah. this to, this PWS uh, Mark 111. This is also a mid length. Yep, it's right here. So this is also a mid length. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the closer the closer the gas port or gas block comes towards the gun, you know, to to the upper receiver. Let's mm -hmm. just say right the harder the recoil, generally speaking. Normally, yeah. generally speaking. Exactly, and then you will obviously want heavier and heavier buffer in there uh, to kind of mitigate that right. extra pressure coming at you. Mm -hmm. In this case, what we have is, I believe this is a carbine length? This is a pistol length. Pistol length, okay, yep. yeah, you're right. This is right here, man. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a pistol length. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is a 5.56, five, I know there's a 300 Blackout uh, Q Honey Badger. If this is a 5.56 five, gun, Dude, this is just going to be a snappy gun. Even yeah. though 5.56 is not a snappy round, mm -hmm. but it will be in a uh, 
pistol length configuration. Oh, yeah. Especially set up like that. Yeah. Ex exactly like that. So especially with a can too. Yep. Like if you throw a can on it too, this is just gonna be like, if you don't tune this thing right, you're gonna eat your gun up. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna start breaking parts. Oh, absolutely. And then we have intermediate gas yep. uh, systems. Obviously, this is a uh, mid-length system, but right. you know, Mark uh, 12 from Daniel Defense. They have basically it's somewhere in between the mid-length and rifle length. Right. And it's just super soft shooting if it's tuned the right way. Yeah. And uh, with that being said, those are the gas block locations mm -hmm. or distances. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about adjustments mm -hmm. because we're talking about this video is all about tuning up your AR-15. Yep. We talked about tuning up the uh, buffer and buffer springs. Let's talk about tuning up the gas blocks. Yeah. All right. So obviously on the PWS, it, it is a piston upper number one as well. That's right. There's piston versus DI. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys want to know about that too, we have a video on that one as well. So definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. So you've got plenty of adjustment on that actual piston. So you basically got a customized size for whatever you want to shoot with, mm -hmm. depending on your um, cartridge load. So just FYI, it really does come into play with 5.56, but immensely comes into play with 300 blackout. Different loads, different pressures, different all that stuff, so just bear that in mind. Yeah, this uh, gas port, the adjustment mm -hmm. right here, it's right there. So use a little Allen key, you just put it through one of those holes and twist it left or right, depending on your configuration, if you're shooting express or not. Right, and you should really start playing. If you have an adjustable gas block, start using different loads. See what works, see what doesn't work. Add a can to it, see what happens when you add back pressure to the system. Sometimes you don't even actually have to touch it just to get it to run regular 55 grain ball, so FYI. So. Exactly, and you gotta make sure, guys, whenever you're adjusting your gun, uh, you have to, uh, some people want it so soft shooting so they just go to that bare minimum where the bolt goes all the way to the back, barely hits the wall, mm -hmm. and goes back forward. Okay, fine, it'll chamber around, but you're you're kind of swimming in the uh, shark-infested waters there. Yeah. Because if your gun gets a little dirty, through, uh, if you're shooting a can, obviously, with a can, or adverse conditions, whatever, then it's not gonna have enough oomph to go all the way to back, and you're gonna have a malfunction, failure to feed. Short strokes. Finish. Exactly, <laughs> so make sure when you tune it, you tune it enough where it just hits the wall just enough, and then tune it a little bit more. Right. You know, so that way, even if you get a little dirty, whatever, the gun gets dirty, it could still function reliable because reliability is very important. Yeah. All right, so uh, piston adjustments right mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. And now let's move on to this Honey Badger SD uh, from Q. Yeah. Now this is a DI gun. Correct. And how you know it's different? You got a couple of ports right here. You can kind of clearly see right. gas is jacked from here. Mm -hmm. But this one has an adjustable gas block. Talk about it. So especially with DI guns, right? Because you want to have the maximum amount of adjustability when it comes to it, because this is delivering everything that it shoots as it sends through. So especially with 300 blackout, due to the range of different grain weights in, in uh, rifle or in the calibers, whether it be supers with 110s, 125s, 150s, moving up to heavier projectiles, whether it be 200 grain, 190 grain, 200 grain, 220 grain subs, and even 235s. So yeah. just FYI, which each one of those comes a different in pressure and how the back pressure feeds. So with this, you've got a lovely little keyhole spot yeah. right there that you put a little tool in, a little Allen wrench, and just yeah. tweak it to however you want to run with the type of load that you're shooting. So yeah, that, that to me is ultimate customization and adjustability to actually, you know, mission dictates what your gear, so this, this dictates what you're gonna do with your gas block. Exactly, so you, when you adjust it, you guys gotta make sure that you adjust it to a point where it runs reliably. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're just trying to remove that snappiness out of it, okay? So your gun doesn't get beat up. At the same time, it's more pleasure to shoot. And at the same time, guess what? You're more accurate because your follow-throughs are more uh, consistent, mm -hmm. let's just say. Mm -hmm. And then we have another system here, which is Ryan's ADM build over there. Uh, now this guy is perfectly tuned. When I say perfectly tuned, literally perfectly tuned. They did a really good job with this thing, but it doesn't have an adjustable gas block. It's a 13.9 with a pin and weld at Huxworks, a, uh, a flow can over here. Mm -hmm. Now, what Ryan did, uh, they have this traditional gas block here. Oops, it's a light 80 right there. Traditional gas block right there. They opened up the gas port mm -hmm. just enough perfectly where it worked perfectly for it with his A5 uh, buffer with a rifle length spring. Right. So you guys want to talk about tuning an AR-15, this is the epitome of it. Right. All right. Rifle length spring, A5 buffer, 
and you have a non-adjustable uh, gas block, but the port is custom open perfectly to work with the system yeah. with a can in it. And when you uh, run through like a 55 grain, 62 grain. It can run anything. It can run reliably. anything. <laughs> reliably, and yet it is a very soft shooting yeah. gun. Very flat shooting gun. Now, if this thing didn't have a can on it and you put like a big old brake on it and adjust it for that one, this thing wouldn't move at all. You know what I'm saying? It just wouldn't move at all. And I, granted, this is tuned for the can, can right here. Right. So there's also systems like that. So you have piston systems where you have adjustable gas block. And, and the, the good thing about the, uh, the good and bad thing, I guess. The good thing about piston systems, you have the adjustable gas block, right? Mm -hmm. You have express, non express, maybe the third position. Uh, adverse, some of them have multiple positions, but mm -hmm. on average, it's, it's about that. Now, that may not be enough to get that perfect shooting experience that you're looking for. That's when you attack the buffer spring and the buffer, buffer there to kind of finely tune yeah. the rest of it. And uh, when it comes to DI guns, I feel like you get more adjustability there. Yeah, especially with the adjustable gas block, for sure. Exactly, so, so you get more adjustability there. Mm -hmm. So you can actually start playing with the uh, first with the little adjustable gas block, mm -hmm. see how it is and get it to that perfect sweet level. And mm -hmm. then if it's not at the perfect level that you're looking for, then you can just start attacking your uh, buffer system yeah. and see how that goes for you. Yeah. But in a nutshell, that's about it, guys. What do you guys think? Do you have anything else to add? No, man, I mean, what do you guys think? Did we cover things yeah. on here that you, you find interesting? I'm pretty sure you do if you've tuned yeah. into this video. And there's a lot of nuances to this. I mean, there's so many, different flavors for different savers, different strokes for different folks, and however you run or run it and however you want it to field, it's, it's how you want to build it, man. Exactly, so. and, and I mean, we, we try to cover obviously the piston and gas and mm -hmm. different uh, sizes on the uh, gas block uh, uh, distances, obviously the buffer systems, and obviously shooting spressed, non spressed But you guys get the idea. Yeah. When you want to tune up your AR-15, so it runs reliably, but yet that perfect nice, good, flat, soft shooting experience, you really gotta play around with it. Play around with the buffer system and also gas uh, system, depending on the setup that you have. Let us know in the comment section if you um, have any other questions, if you guys want us to do a round two version of this video and what else should we cover. But in a nutshell, I think this should cover the, all of the basics that you guys need to get it started. Yeah, yeah. and while you're at it and the checking on mood, I'm pretty sure CF Contest has some Pretty cool stuff on there, right? That's right, like, some really, really cool something stuff. Something that you may see on this table. It doesn't matter when you watch this video. Hmm. At any point, you go to cfcontest.com. At any point, you are not gonna be disappointed, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Stuff at no cost to you. I don't know. I feel like this, th specifically this one, even this serial number. Really? Yeah, I feel like this should be uh, on cfcontest.com. Uh, what, do, what do you think, John? No. No, okay, all right. But well, I'm pretty well, sure we've got something. Something. Something that we could do. That we could do. And lastly, before we get out of here, yeah. it's a very small thing, charging handles. Ah, some people complain about the gas to the face. I mean, I, I just put it like this, either you know, man up or lady down a bit, my thing. But yeah. for those who don't, um, you can also get a um, charging handle that has a raised shelf that helps seal that yeah, spot. Yeah, so you get back. less. Yep. So There's that, I mean, you can do that. Charging handle definitely covers, and some people will say, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, I shoot a piston gun. Gases, you know, all of the things. Well, there's a piston right here. Everything happens right here. I don't have any gas coming back to the bolt area. You suppress it, you're getting some type of Dude, back pressure back to there the There is a vacuum yeah. effect when the round escapes the barrel. Yeah. Whoosh, all this vacuum effect comes back, so you get a lot of gases come back. But, or else, you know what, you'd have no dirty bolts. How come you have a dirty bolt? on a piston gun, explain that to me. Any of those, any, anyone well, who tells me that. Well, explosion in the chamber. And the, yeah, but I'm talking no, about explosion in the chamber, but it's still yeah. inside the bolts, what I'm talking about. Because yeah. explosion happens right here, right? So what I'm trying to say is, you get a lot of gases back. If you don't believe me, you shoot suppressed with a piston gun and a horrible uh, charging handle, and you're gonna have a lot of gas to your face. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's the last thing we wanted to cover. Let us know in the comment section your thoughts. As always, we appreciate your business. Thanks for tuning in this video. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one.